Hey, it's Mark, but also get the Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got Breathe in the Mailing, Breathe Out the Marketing, the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are things? Great. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. It's great to see you. you We've got your partner in crime, the Nightcap OG, dude, buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are things in freezing Alaska? Things are warming up, man. It's over 30 degrees here today. And the snow's starting to melt, so it's all good. Are, are people crying about can't go snowmobiling this weekend? Oh, no. No. I think that's the, a the, thing. Yeah, it's a thing up north. Up north, they do a lot of that. So there's still up snow, still snow up there. All right. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm good. Doing well. Thanks. I don't want to sabotage this entire podcast, but I do want to just mention something about Tate Litchfield. Uh-oh. And why I'm not happy with him. So Uh-oh. for a year, I've been able to not distract myself and stay away from television. For the most part, I've watched Ted Lasso, but Yellowstone, mm-hmm. man, I binging. I'm now on season four. Wow, you you pulled ahead. You yeah, wow, you have been seriously binging. That is probably unhealthy. <laughs> the amount of TV you're watching. You went from zero to what six to eight hours a day consumption wise. It went from zero to six to eight hours a day, and the reason it is so compelling to me is the land. Right. The land. If you are not watching Yellowstone and you own raw land, well, start watching Yellowstone. Yeah. Hang on, man, because the more mainstream that show gets, it's only going to do good for our business, right? Absolutely. And you should be, you should be recommending that show, by the way, to everybody that uh, you come across. It's just going to yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, throw everybody into a land of a tizzy. But last but not least, you know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net landmoto.com, the brain, the professor. Learn anything about, thinking about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. We have a, a topic and uh, it got a little testy on, on Facebook this week. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the, the post. There were 28 comments on it. And it's, I think it's a great roundtable topic. Eric Chang writes, I have done four deals on terms and three of the buyers used my 90 day guarantee to back out of the deal. One of the main reasons is that they realized the huge cost and hassle to start the off the grid life that they thought would be cheap and simple. I started to doubt the idea of selling land with terms as a passive way of generating income and would rather do cash deals to avoid the hassle and unpredictability. Thoughts. There were 28 comments on this. Um, most people said they have dropped the, the, the they've not, they do not offer a guarantee. I would say, well, let's see, of the 20 comments, some people said drop it to 30 days. Um, you know, someone who said they've done hundreds of deals has, has never offered a guarantee of any kind and it's not hurt his business one bit. So what do you think? Should we start with, I know he loves going first. It'd be, it'd be terrible to like switch it off now. The Zen master. Oh. All right. Well, there's a few things to unpack there in my, in my mind. We do offer a guarantee. I think it's built into the template and LG pass, uh, whatever it is in there. Is, there's definitely a guarantee. And we, Mark, we go by what you always say, happy customers guaranteed. I mean, even if we didn't have a guarantee, I'm doing air quotes for those of you who are listening, not watching. Um, we want people to be happy. Um, we have enough inventory where we could find another property for them. Uh, so I don't think that, you know, I think in the beginning, uh, just like anything else, when you're mailing, you have lackluster results. When you're doing selling, you run into these ro- roadblocks and obstacles. But you're talking a few deals. We do hundreds and then thousands of deals. And uh, over that long cycle, the returns are minimal. So I am in favor of the guarantee. Also, I think it speaks to matching the, the buyer with a property. Our people, our sales girls, they, when they talk to somebody, I always emphasize that, you know, let's make sure they love the property. If they love the property, 
we can work with them on a price, right? But, but that part of loving the property is making sure it's the right property for them. And I think that goes a long way with the, with the buyer when you maybe even take a property away because you realize what they're looking to do and you realize, hey, this probably isn't the one for you, but we have other ones that we think, you know, so uh, even if you didn't have something at that time, you might say, we get more stuff coming in soon. We'll keep you posted. I think, so I think that there's another part to that, Mark, because he said that they're finding the hassle, right? And uh, maybe some questioning up front as to how they're going to use the land and, and maybe just directing them to a property that sit, suits their needs. I don't know all the details, but those are my two initial thoughts. I like those two initial thoughts, but you know who might not like them <laughs> is the irascible because he's, well, he shouldn't be irascible today. It's 30 degrees. Dude, buddy. The nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, what do you think about those comments? I, I actually 100% agree with Mike. I was going to talk about those two things as well. Uh, I will say that we also have a guarantee. We always have. Uh, it's a 90-day money-back guarantee on terms deals. We, we have no guarantee on cash deals. Cash deals are final. But on terms deals, we do have a 90-day money-back guarantee. Uh, now, I can literally count on on one hand, maybe two hands, the number of times someone has hit us up for a money back guarantee in the six years we've been doing this. So I agree with Mike. I think a lot of it has to come down to really knowing that buyer, making sure the property is right for that buyer before you go through the process. And I can't think of a time really where somebody came back to me and said, I found out this land, you know, it's going to cost me, you know, way, way more than I thought it would. Therefore, I want my money back. It's more some type of life, life situation that they come back uh, for the guarantee. Maybe they lost a job, maybe they have hospital bills, something like that, and they just can't move forward with the land. Uh, and therefore they're gonna come back and take advantage of the guarantee. So it just does not happen that often. And I think it does, you know, back to the happy customer thing, I think it also shows that we stand behind our product. And, you know, if you do sign on the dotted line and and you get out, you know, maybe you can't visit the land right away, but in, within 90 days, you can get out there to see the land. And for whatever reason, it doesn't speak to you like you originally thought, then we're going to honor a guarantee. Now we do have a non-refundable document processing fee. Uh, so when we come out of these situations, we're not completely in the hole. And our cost basis does go down slightly on the property if, if somebody does take advantage of it. But for us, it just doesn't happen very often at all. <clears throat> so let me get this straight. It doesn't happen very often. You have no guarantee on cash. But if they do come back and say they want a refund, which rarely happens, you still lower your cost basis because you charge a processing fee that is non-refundable. Right. How much is that processing fee? $250. $250, not $1 million. No. 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 Okay. That's reasonable. Um, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. You know, this is an interesting topic. And I agree with, you know, Scott Bossman. We have a guarantee. Um, doesn't come up very often. I have given guarantees. Uh, we do enough deals to where every once in a while we give a refund. And honestly, it's no big deal to me. I mean, it happens. It's okay. Um, but I think, I think the, the real question here is not whether or not you should offer uh, a 90-day money-back guarantee, but the question is, what is the purpose of offering a guarantee? What's the point behind that? I mean, what are you trying to you know, express to your buyer, the consumer of this product, this consumer, when you say, hey, look, I'm so positive and confident behind my property that they come with this kind of a guarantee. I mean, what does that do? Well, it instills a sense of trust. It instills a sense of um, professionalism, right? And it helps them feel like you're not just after their money, right? It shows that you're a real person. We have a, a very strict policy and that is we want you to be happy. We don't want you to buy something that you don't love, right? And because we have that company philosophy, when somebody comes to us and says, hey, this isn't working out. This isn't what I thought it was. The grass isn't green enough. The sky's not blue enough. We can tell them, hold on, let us fix this problem. We have two or three solutions. And going to somebody with solutions rather than saying, well, you're SOL, tough luck. You're a big boy. You signed on the dotted line. It makes us 
retain customers. So a lot of those people that you know may ask for a refund, guess who they're going to do business with in the future? They're not going to go to somebody new, right? Because they had a positive experience with me, even if it didn't work out. And so the purpose of my guarantee is, uh, number one, to establish that we're a credible company, right? Our guarantee is big enough to where anybody goes, yeah, 90 days, that's that's legit. That's a long period of time. Um, and so I think that the guarantee is an essential part of this business. I, I read on the comments, plenty of people are saying, yeah, drop it. It's not necessary. It hasn't hurt my business. And they may be right, right? They may be 100% right by saying, look, by offering a guarantee or not offering a guarantee, it's not like people buy land for me. And I, I can't uh, say they're wrong or, or right for that. But I know for us, we're a company that moves a lot of land, like a lot, a lot of land. And um, offering 90-day money-back guarantee has not hurt us at all. I love it. I love it. I bet the at Land Moto HQ, if I had a guess, Scott Todd, with an abundance of empathy, doesn't have a 90-day guarantee. 180 day guarantee. He doubles it. Scott, am I even close? Wait, Scott, you're on, you're on mute, or I can't hear you. You're you're not correct because I don't have a 180 day guarantee. Uh, but, but you know I, what? I am I, correct about the empathy, though. Yeah. Look, I, I mean. And I don't even hold people to accountable to the 90 days that we have, yeah. right? Like if, if you called me up, like I have a 90 day money back guarantee on terms deals, on cash deals, it's no deal, right? It's it's done. But on terms deals, yeah, I do 90 days. And the thing is, it's like, if you called me 120 days or a year later and said, I hate this property, great. Now that doesn't necessarily mean I'm after the return period that I'm going to give you your money back. I mean, I might. It's not likely, but I might say, here, let's swap it dollar for dollar for another property, or let's apply this over to there. I've done that countless times, right? Someone wants to change and we we move them around. No problem. It's just moving, moving numbers around. That's all it is. But the thing is, is like, I mean, I kind of agree with what everybody else was saying about the fact that, you know, first of all, you have to match up and have a conversation with somebody, right? Like you have, somebody has to be the adult in the room. So someone calls up and says, hey, I want to buy this property. The first thing that I teach in flight school is, cool, what are you hoping to do with the land? Oh, man, I'm hoping to do, uh, hoping to live off the grid. Yeah. Now, in your brain, your brain is like, okay, uh, what, is this property good for that purpose? Off the grid, for example. I want to live off the grid. That's the example that I think Eric used. They will live off the grid. Cool. Hey, that's really cool. How long have you been looking or thinking about living off the grid? Oh, two months or two days, or I just saw a video and the guy is talking about how cool it would be to like do all this stuff. Cool. Have you thought about all the numbers and everything that goes through with that? You know, like, have you thought about the investment that you're going to have to make to achieve your goal? No. Yeah. You might want to think about that because that, that might, might be a de detrimental, like negative to you. Like that's part of the whole picture. But I think that the other piece too here is that you can easily oversell the guarantee. Right. right. You know, like if on every single call you're using that to say, oh, and by the way, if you change your mind, then accept my offer a guarantee. Well, I want you to and like I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying that I've seen that that happens before. And I just want you to think about going to Nordstrom's, for example. Maybe you've never shopped at Nordstrom's, but you've heard fantastic stories about Nordstrom's and how some guy returned a tire to Nordstrom's and they don't even sell tires, which might be myth. I don't know. It might happen one time, but you can't take tires to Nordstrom's, trust me. Not that I tried, but I asked. And, uh, but the thing is, is like, the, the thing is, is like when, when the store uh, clerk hands you the bag, they don't say to you, and if you don't love it, you can bring it back. That's not how they walk you out the door. They, they're like, this is going to be fantastic for you. Now, if I get home and I try it on and I hate it, well, then I'm going to do one of two things. I'm either going to like live with it or I'm going to drive back down the Nordstrom's and I'm going to return it knowing that I have the peace in my, of mind that it's there. So the reality is, is I, I bet you if you asked another question mark of 
how often do you mention the money back guarantee that we ask? We don't really mention it, right? Like it's there, but we're not closing with it. We're not, we're not saying bring it back if you're not happy. Neither does Nordstrom's, but yet they get returns. Amazon says satisfaction guaranteed. There's stuff that I buy from Amazon. I don't return. I hate it, right? I, I donate it or something. I don't know because I'm too tired or too, too lazy to go return the thing. But see, the thing is, is like it all depends on that conversation that you're, you're having. Mike Zano said, if you're matching the property up from the get-go, well, that's going to diminish it. If you are uh, closing with just bring it back, well, you're probably going to get it back. So there's different ways that you can structure your conversation with somebody. But like I said, I don't think that any of us are even mentioning the money back guarantee, even though it's in the contract. We don't mention it. Like there's no reason to mention it because that might be, I want a sale and I'm going to use that as a crutch. Right. Well, don't use it as a crutch. Don't even mention it. Or if you feel that it's hurting your business, remove it. Like right? no one says that you have to have that in there, but I'll tell you what, I have it. Tate has it, Zeno has it, Boston has it, you have it, Mark. So guess what? For all the people that don't want it, I have a competitive advantage over you. And I, I thank you for that. I do. Eric, Eric Peterson has a 100-day guarantee. He had to like one-up us. Yeah, I was going to say, his is 100. And, and Scott hit the nail right on the head. It's For us, this isn't a crutch, right? For us, this is something that we'll pull out in the last, you know, this is our Hail Mary attempt at, helping you feel confidence in us. Right. But we're not using this, you know, this, this guarantee as our primary form of sales, right. It might come up, but most of the time it doesn't, we don't talk about it. It's in our contracts, right. It says it in there, but I've also sent contracts to people and had them sign within three minutes, which tells me that uh, they didn't read them. So, you know, we want people to be happy. And I think leading with the fact that you're a real person and you want your customers to be happy is far more powerful than a 90 day, hundred day, 180 day guarantee. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in business and life, let's just like, and I actually did a post on this, uh, this week on, on Monday, my Monday meditations and Facebook group, the My networks group, just go and rule it. Treat people the way you want to be treated, right? How would you feel if you bought a piece of land sight unseen? And you go out there and it's not what you thought it was going to be. The pictures weren't exactly what they were represented as, which can often be the case. And the guy's like, oh, sorry, no guarantees. You know, you're stuck. Like, how would you feel? You'd be really disappointed. You'd probably be so disappointed that you would never trust to buy property sight unseen again, where our customers can go ahead, buy property site on scene, take their time, go look at it, right? They've got peace of mind. It's a completely different experience. So we probably even get more sales faster because of the, the guarantee. Then somebody's like, oh yeah, I don't have a guarantee. I don't need a guarantee. And it's never hurt my business. Well, it, you just don't know if it's hurt your business or not. So and who knows? I mean, there's so many different factors involved as well. I mean, I, I don't know what kind of property you're selling, but in the way you're selling it, but I know for me to sleep well at night, I like the philosophy of having happy customers guaranteed because I'm not perfect. I can make a mistake on due diligence and they go out there, they call me out on it. What am I going to say? Oh, sorry, no guarantees, right? So it's, it's not just for the customer. It's for us as well. So we can feel good about the land we're selling and the way that we're selling it. So that, that's the way I see it. Now, if, if you don't want to have a guarantee, sure, don't have a guarantee. Um, thank you. <laughs> you know, yeah, again, it's going to help all of us uh, for sure. Uh, and then I think the other issue is what Scott Todd said. It's like, you know, you, you don't lead with it. For sure, you don't lead with it. You don't keep, you know, hammering it down on them like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's no problem, you know. So uh, I think it's, it's a really good topic. Uh, my last point is going to be, do you just give up doing term sales then? Because you don't want the anxiety of a guarantee because we're saying have a guarantee. 
Well, now we're getting into a whole other topic. Do you want cash? Do you want cash flow? Do you want active income? Do you want passive income? Which we're not going to get into. Whole other, whole other topic. But we are now at that point in the podcast because Taria is not here. We're going to ask Scott Todd for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Before Scott does that, we have to mention our sponsor, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd, Azure Sherpa, who's done it thousands of times. And oh yeah, on topic, you're going to make back that tuition 180 days or less guaranteed, guaranteed. Just show us your work. So um, we like to gold rule it. We also like to have skin in the game. You know what has skin in the game, Scott Todd? Oh. Pilots. They do have skin in the game, that's they true. They have skin in the game. And we're, we've got skin in the game too, just like a pilot. That's why we call it, well, that's not why we call it flight school. But in the spirit of flight school, we also have skin in the game. So if our methods don't work, you shouldn't have to pay for it, right? Just show us your work, show us you're doing it. Doesn't work for you, guaranteed it will. No problem. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. You owe it to yourself, your family, your friends, your community to become wealthy. This is the quickest way I know, the safest way I know, the least risk, amount of risk I know to become wealthy. So schedule a call, landgeek.com forward slash training. Scott Todd, what is your tip of the week? I, listen, I didn't know I was doing the tip of the week, so I don't have one. So, uh, you know, you guys like to play the game where you grab your nose or something. I don't know. I don't, I mean, like. Nose goes. Like, it's not a game, nose. Scott. This is not instead a game. This is of law. preparing, instead of preparing you know, and say, hey, who's got the tip of the week at the beginning? You know, you guys just want to opt out. So mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I don't have a tip of the week other than other than this one. So it's either this one or no well, tip. Well, of the week. I and always knew you'd have a tip. You've always had a, a quote. I feel a quote coming. I'm not going to give a quote because I'm not a quote dude, but whatever. Here's the here's the thing. I mean, I could just read a quote off of Mike Zano's back wall back there. But anyway, here's here's what I would just say is, look, there's a lot of changes within the within systems that that uh, that we're using, right? You know, LG Pass is constantly changing. Man, it's uh, I mean, new new theme design. Some I see a lot of people still not using the new theme design. It's there. We update stuff in the users group. So my tips are like I got three of them we can combine. Number one, if you're an LG Pass user and you're not on the LG Pass users group in Mighty Networks, go join Mark's Mighty Network group. And uh, I'm sure he'll provide a link there. Go join the group and then join the users group because that's where we tell, we share all the new things that are coming out. And man, we got some, some good stuff on the horizon for LG Pass. So tip number one, join the LG Pass users group. Tip number two, go check out LG Pass. Go check out the new theme design. Mark loves it. He approves on it. So he's good with it. That's number two. Number three, guess what? There's a whole new world for Land Moto too. Go check it out. Go log into your account if you haven't logged in in a while. There's all kinds of stuff. There are so many geeky things in there. Like I get lost because there's so many analytics, profile analytics you can go in there. You can hit your dashboard. You can go see your profile analytics. You can see how many times your, your ads have been viewed combined down to the day. Okay, by the day. How many times people have, have called you off of Landmodo? How many times people have clicked to your website off of Landmodo? So you can get so much geeky resources off there. And you know what? It's getting better. Traffic last year, January over January, 4 x it, baby. So yeah, go check out the Landmodo. That's tip number three. Number two is go check out LG Pass. Number one is to go join the LG Pass users group. I gave three tips. I'm out next time. I love it. And look, look how polite Mike Zana was. He actually raised his hand in Zoom. Mike, yeah, what would you like to say? Well, I just want, there's one thing that struck me that there was something Scott Todd said, and I think it, it got me thinking, and I think it's really important to dial back as we close out this is the, he talked about the mental battle when you, you know, you have a buyer on the phone, you want to make the sale to them. 
and you know you realize that maybe the property doesn't fit them but you kind of you know maybe you haven't sold a property you've only sold a few properties and you feel like so you start to do and what i would say is oversell it and i think we we always talk about how the buying and the selling sides mirror each other so when you don't send a lot of offer letters you feel compelled to buy a property i got to have landitis and you overpay sometimes because of that lack of mailing um, consistency on the other side the marketing pieces of it, you have someone's on the phone and they want to buy a property. You, you kind of feel like it's not a good fit for them, but inside your head, you're like, I want to sell this. And then, you know, it's not really the right property. So you instead of overpaying, you oversell it. And then you kind of lead into the situation where a few months later they catch on, right? It's like, they realize like, this isn't the property for me and they want to get, give it back. So I thought that was, he talked about that mental, the scarcity mentality, I think is what sort of what he was referring to in your head. And I think it's important people to, to focus on that uh, and think about that. I think those are all really good points. Well, I thought this was a great podcast. I want to thank the listeners and remind them that the only way that Mike Zeno is going to come prepared with excellent point after excellent point after excellent point on this Right Roundtable podcast, if he's just three little favors, follow, rate, review, the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich. Um, so please do it. It really helps us. Even if you don't want a signed copy of Dirt Rich, just do it anyways, because it all it helps our fragile egos. So please do it. All right. We ready to do this? One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, 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 freedom bring. bring. Not bad. By, by the way, I'm a little disappointed. Speaking of fragile ego, no one mentioned my new Warby Parker glasses. This is my backup. I didn't notice your glasses. They look good. I thought the hair was the difference. So if anybody's listening, you got to go onto the YouTube and see Mark's. I think well, I thought it was the hair. I didn't realize it was the glass. Maybe it's the combination. That's what it is. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny, Mark, is um, I saw that. I saw your glasses, and in my brain, I'm like, oh, he's not wearing his contacts today because your glasses are typically like see-through. And I just thought you're not wearing your glasses today. So I thought, I'm not, sure, I'm not you're, you're not wearing your contacts today. So it's then you said that I'm like, dude, he always wears glasses. What are you talking about? Yeah, there's there's a curb enthusiasm about this where um, Larry's getting outfit tracked by by Murray Abraham. Is that his name? The actor Murray somebody. He's like famous actor. He was in uh, Mozart. F. Murray Abraham. Anyways, so Murray mentions like, oh, I see Larry, you're, you're wearing the same pants. It's like, you outfit tracking me? Murray, these are clean. <laughs> so clearly you guys aren't, aren't glasses tracking me, which I guess is good. We're not superficial. Not at all. Right? At all. I wouldn't yeah. know if you wore the same shirt twice. I'm sorry. I have like five of the same shirts, just different colors or some not even different colors. Yeah. Somehow we need to get Viore as a sponsor. I'm loving these shirts. They are it's the so official. Uh, yeah. It's the official uh, wardrobe. Of the ambitiously lazy. lazy. Wardrobe. Yeah. Official, officially uh, official wardrobe of the ambitiously lazy land investors. Right. Yeah. Oh, like an ad. Oh. And, and by the way, Scott Bossman, I'm not having a heart attack. Um, I had a hard Peloton ride and I'm still cooling down. I'm Can't glad to hear you're back on it. Back yeah, on the I've horse. Been, I've been, I've been pretty uh, consistent this last month. Are you in that group with the wristband now, Scott, that you can see Mark's uh, pulse? No, I'm not overly analytical about my, my health metrics. I just, I like to keep it simple. That's a whole nother kind of like, Mark, I see your pulse is a little elevated. Everything okay over there? <laughs> There's there's been a few times where I've wanted to call Scott Todd, like around his bedtime, be like, dude, are you getting ready for bed? Because I see his sleep stats. Listen, I'm to go to bed. Creepy, creepy, creepy. That, yeah, it's that kind of weird. I get off of the yeah. group, man. Like, Time to go. A little, a little weird, here, man. It, look, there. You know, it show, it's showing concern, for sure. But it, it, it is. I mean, to Scott Bossman's point. Like it is weird to see our each other's stats, like you know, talk about data tracking. But there's also you know, it's it's I, I like knowing like oh, Scott Todd slept better than me last night. Okay, I'm going to bed so, a little earlier. There's a word for what you're doing, or 
a, a name for the type of person you are, and that's a creeper. Or a stalker. <laughs> a stalker. <laughs> You're a metric creeper. <laughs> Well, I will tell you the, the, the first week that we were on there, you know, like we, you get this update on, I don't know, Monday or something that says, Hey, everybody, congratulate the land geek because he won in all performances and strain and sleep and in recovery. Oh. And I'm like, dude, oh. he's winning his own group. Cause it's named the land geek group. Right. I'm like, he's winning his own group. <laughs> and I, and I, at first I was like, this is, this is garbage, man. Like this is complete garbage. And, you know, look, if I guess if I had as much time as Mark, I could win in the strength and the sleep and the recovery. But, you know, people have to keep stuff moving along in America. And, you know, some of us aren't the ambitiously lazy ones, but it comes through, comes through for Mark. He's shining that. But yesterday he didn't win all three categories. No, sir. He didn't. Man, someone beat him on one of them. Can we congratulate Scott Todd, his average recovery? was fantastic. He won fantastic. the fantastic for recovery. I am so competitive that this would be unhealthy for me. Yeah. I don't want like, to. Like I look at this group. and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know if I'm going to sleep our harder. group? Because you would, you would destroy us. Would you know? Well, no, I think I would be terrible because I ride too much. I'm never recovered. I sleep like crap because I've got little kids that, you know, wet the bed still. So I'm up all hours of the night and I got a new cat that's just, driving me nuts so yeah i would lose nobody needs that. to track that like nobody needs to track that <laughs> wait new i don't need to be reminded that i had a bad night's sleep yeah i'm already very aware of that but could it be used to help with like if your friend was going to have, say have some sort of cardiac issue would you be notified and you could call some i mean is it does it have that sort of capability right uh, no not Cal? not really but you know we can see when someone's going to get sick because their their hrv is low it's it's the, the metrics are kind of cool. And then you tell them and then Boston's mentally they point. become sick. So then you tell them and then mentally they become sick because it's a self-fulfilling. I don't know. I don't want that. Hey, you're about to get sick. I do feel kind of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. yeah my creepy. glands are a little swollen. No, like, it wasn't it. Man. On, on, <laughs> yeah. sat, on Sun, no, on Saturday, yeah, Saturday, I wake up and my, now HRV is like your heart rate variability and it stays within a range and mine, like the most it's ever been is 45. Like it's been, that's the highest it's ever been, 45. You look at somebody else and they might be, you know, 60 or something. Well, I wake up on Saturday and my HRV is like a rocket ship from the day before. Like this, it goes to a 60. It's never Come been on. a 60. That's a great question, right? Like, and then now, now I spend Saturday and I'm Anakin. trying to justify it in my brain. Like, Oh, well, Friday, I was really relaxed. You know, I had a great day. I had no stress in my world. Like it was a great day. I, this is all the crap that goes to my mind. So now on Saturday, I'm trying to replicate Friday because I don't want to see it dive, but it does dive. It goes back down into the 30s. So I go like this and like this. And according to Dr. So Podolsky, he'd say, you're getting sick, man. You're going to get sick now. Oh, and then, only, only if it's a trend three days in a row, then I'm going to, I'm going to box you and be like, okay, Scott, you're going to have to rest now. It's but, but today it shoots back up to like 54, 56. What is this number? It makes what no sense. What Doesn't happens? Make any sense. What happens when HR starts handing these things out to people? Oh, you called in sick today, Scott, huh? Well, uh, according <laughs> to the stats, you're fine. <laughs> We'd like to see you in here in about an hour. Okay. Why, why uh, do you okay. think Mark, why do you think Mark wants you guys to get this thing? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey wake up you're doing fine get in there <laughs> yeah hey man exactly. you've spent too much time sitting down get it's up like you, yeah this is this is really yeah this is the beginning of the end throw those away oh no scary this is just the beginning of the because end. after after this we're all getting inside tracker and i want to see the blood work I'm not okay. doing that. That's garbage. We'll see. We'll see. Anyways, uh, see you guys. Thanks. See ya. <laughs> it's bad. 
Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.